Hello chemists and welcome to another fantastic episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today we're going to be looking at why transition metals make such good catalysts. This is AQA specification 2.5 transition metals and it appears on paper one of your final exams. So as I mentioned in the last episode, link at the top of the screen if you haven't watched it already, transition metals can have different oxidation states and it's this ability which makes them particularly good for use as catalysts. So there are two types of catalysts that you need to know about for your AQA level. That's the heterogeneous catalysts and the homogeneous catalysts. Heterogeneous catalysts are in a different phase from the reactants and examples include the contact process and the harbour process. Homolytic catalysts are where the catalyst is in the same phase as the reactants. Examples of this include the Fe2 plus with S2O8 and Mn2 plus with C2O4. The contact process is an important example of a heterogeneous catalyst. Sulfur dioxide gas is reacted with oxygen gas in the presence of a solid vanadium oxide catalyst to form sulfur trioxide. This is a two-step process. In step one, the vanadium oxide reacts with the sulfur dioxide to form sulfur trioxide. This shows the importance of variable oxidation states for the catalyst, as vanadium goes from plus five to plus four. In step two, the vanadium oxide reacts with oxygen to regenerate the catalyst so it can be used again. The harbour process is another example of a heterogeneous catalyst. This time, nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas in the presence of a solid iron catalyst to form NH3. This produces ammonia, which is economically very important. In this case, the catalyst reduces the cost of production by limiting the energy required and the time taken to produce the product. Catalytic converters are used in car exhaust systems to break down the harmful waste products such as nitrogen oxides and carbon monoxides. In the equation, carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide are converted to carbon dioxide and nitrogen using a solid rhodium catalyst. It is also possible to use platinum or palladium metal for the catalyst. You should be able to identify carbon monoxide as the reducing agent and nitrogen dioxide as the oxidizing agent in this reaction. To maximize the effectiveness of these expensive metals, they're usually deposited on a honeycomb structure to maximize their surface area. When it comes to describing the process of a heterogeneous catalyst, it's important that we use key terminology. First, the reactants are adsorbed onto the surface of the catalyst. These locations are referred to as the active sites and they're where the reaction takes place. Once the reaction is completed, the products are desorbed from the surface of the catalyst. The strength of adsorption is critical to the successful working of a catalyst. If the adsorption is too weak, then it will fail to bring enough of the reactants together. Silver is a common example of a transition metal, which is often has a weak absorption. If the adsorption is too strong, then the catalyst will not be able to release the product once it has formed. An example of this is tungsten. For a reaction to be catalyzed, it has to happen on the surface of the catalyst at an active site. Catalysts are often expensive metals, so they are placed on support mediums, such as honeycomb structures, to maximize their surface area. This increases their effectiveness while keeping costs down. It's possible to stop a catalyst from working by poisoning it. This is where impurities bind irreversibly to the active sites of the catalyst. Common examples of this include lead in catalytic converters and sulfur in the harbour process. Homogeneous catalysts are in the same phase of the reactants. Catalysts like this lead to the formation of an intermediate species. And this creates a strange looking energy profile diagram where the formation of the intermediates have both have activation energy, which gives this double hump in the middle. Iron 2 plus ions catalyze the reaction between S2O8 2 minus ions and iodide ions. This reaction is particularly slow as it involves the reaction of two negative ions. Fe2 plus helps to move the electrons through the reaction and creates a two step process. In step one, Fe2 plus reacts with S2O8 to form sulfate ions. This is another example of where the variable oxidation states of iron allow it to catalyze the reaction. In step two, the now formed iron 3 plus ions react with the iodide ions. The iron 3 plus ions can take the electrons from the iodide ions, allowing the formation of iodine and the regeneration of the catalyst. Mn2 plus ions catalyze this rather complicated looking reaction between MnO4 minus and C2O4 2 minus. This is another example of a reaction bringing together two negative ions. In step one, the Mn2 plus reacts with MnO4 minus to form water. Again, we can see the change in oxidation states of the catalyst. In step two, the Mn3 plus now reacts with C2O4 2 minus to produce carbon dioxide. This reaction again shows the catalyst transporting electrons between two species to facilitate the redox reaction. There's a little bit more to this reaction. It's what's known as an autocatalyzed reaction. 
This is where the product of the reaction catalyzes the reaction taking place. Because of the lack of catalyst at the beginning of the process, the reaction starts slowly. And as more product is formed, more catalyst is available for the reaction and it increases in speed. In, sum in summary then, heterogeneous catalysts, they're in a different phase of their reactants. Examples we've looked at today include the contact process and the harbor process. They often use a support medium to maximize their effectiveness whilst keeping the costs down and the catalyst can be poisoned with impurities. Looking at homogeneous catalysts then, these are in the same phase as their reactants. They involve an intermediate species and we've seen examples of Fe2 plus catalyzing C2O8 reactions and the autocatalyzed reaction of the Mn2 plus. And that's it for one rather long episode of Bale's Chemistry. We've gone through a lot of detail about catalysts, different reactions, and a lot you need to learn. So go back and watch it again, or to take some time and go and watch some of our other Transition Metal episodes on the screen above. If you've liked the video, hit the thumbs up below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.